love the word inspire. It means to breathe life into you. And it wasn't on my schedule, but I had to say to those who have spoken, I feel inspired. Thank you. We are celebrating this year the 50th anniversary of the release of the perennial bestseller, Ogmandino's book, The Greatest Salesman in the World. Very exciting, 25 million copies, 25 different languages. In four weeks, my wife and I leave for Israel. We're gonna be looking at sites for the filming. The script is being written now for the movie. So watch the next couple of years, The Greatest Salesman is gonna be on the big screen. That's been an 18 year long project. Well, recently, my wife and I had the privilege of going to Eastern Europe to speak. We spoke in Budapest four times, then to Vienna, and then to Prague. And I was most worried about Prague, because when the Iron Curtain came down, they said that opportunists filled in the void, and the people had been trained to do business by elbows. Can I get the visual? By elbows. And I wanted to teach them about love. <laughs> well, it was 4 o'clock in the morning. This morning, by the way, it was 3.53. I always wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning. It's always the case. And I didn't bring my clicker with me, so I'll have to just signal and you can change the slides for me. 4 o'clock in the morning, and I am thinking about what I'm going to say that evening in Prague. And I have an experience. And it's a strange one. Thank you. I am scuba diving in a cave. Now I've got a headlamp. This is the only source of light. And I look down the bottom of the cave, and there, there's an ancient city. And I'm getting ready to take this left-hand turn, and all of a sudden I have this overwhelming sense of anxiety. I don't know how to get out of the cave. And I'm going to run out of air. I have run out of air at 80 feet swimming with sharks. You don't want to run out of air. And I'm going, wow, what was that all about? Then the distinct impression. Share this with them this evening before you begin your speech. So that night I got on the stage. They introduced me and I, I turned to the, to the translator who was sitting right over here and I said, translate this verbatim. I'm going to check, right? I told them the story and then had this impression. Ask them if they feel like they're suffocating and don't know how to get out. Those that spoke English went just like that. And the rest did as soon as he finished translating. Then the impression came, tell them you're here to show them how. So I said it. I shared three principles with them that night. I want to share just one of them with you today. It's the most important of the three. Okay? And I'm so glad I picked this one because we have watched walking, talking examples all day of people who are practicing this very principle. So it should sound familiar. I told them that a few years prior, I was in Chicago speaking to a group of real estate investors, and I was very concerned because they had really unhealthy habits of thinking. They were engaged in a lot of fantasy about what it was going to be like when they were going to be rich. They were very frustrated that life wasn't turning out that way, and they were beating themselves up. I can almost touch it. I can almost taste it. Why can't I have it? What's wrong with me? And some would even say, does God not love me? They were questioning worth and worthiness, ability, character, contribution, horrific internal dialogue, sabotaging dialogue. And what I've grown to know, as we've done habit finder assessments on 100,000 people, 6,500 of which I have done personally, is that our habits of thinking impact every facet of our lives. How we feel when we wake up in the morning, the decisions we make, the actions we take, the results we create are driven by those habits. These are down below the surface of personality and behavior. This is what's driving it. Well, I want to share with them a dream. 
I called it the Chicago Dream. I was in Chicago. I'm going to speak to this group. And the night before I spoke, I had a dream. Very vivid dream. In that dream, I'm walking along a path, and I've got over my shoulder, and you can just do this with me, just go like this, just, this big white muslin bag. It's so big, it's, dra it's, dra it's uh, dragging on the ground. It's weighing about two or 300 pounds. Can you see it? It's, uh, it's exhausted. There's this man approaching me, and I want to connect with him. I know all the principles of connection. But I'm too tired. I'm exhausted. And then this voice says to me, let go of the bag. Do you feel it? I watched all of these people in Prague go, it was wonderful. Okay, we're connecting. We might get to love yet, you know? Then I was told to turn around and face the bag. There's a reason why we drag that bag behind us. It's filled with all of our failures and our discouragements and our frustrations and everybody that's ever hurt us and everybody we've ever hurt. Our shame, our blame. You feel it? Well, reluctantly, I turned around. And then I was told to empty the sack. And there was a stack of silver orbs with spikes. <laughs> I brought one with me. Woody Woodward, a dear friend, actually made this and sent it to me, and I opened the package, and I went, ooh, wow. This is what it looked like, a whole pile of them. And I was told, pick up the most painful experience of your life. Now, just be with me for a moment. What's the most painful of your life? I'm asking these people in Prague to do likewise. Pick it up. Do you know what it is? Do you know what it is? Just do this with me. Hold it in your hands, just like that. Mine happened in Chicago. I was age three through five. I was in the care and keeping of pedophiles. <laughs> Dad was going to college, working at night. Mom was in a high rise. She grew up on a farm. They didn't have plumbing until she was married. They thought this couple who couldn't have children <coughs> were the best people in the world. They brought Santa Claus to our studio apartment. They, they bought clothes for us. They took us on day trips. But they took far more than they ever gave. And I'm holding this. I never wanted this. I, I wanted to be someone else, somewhere else, doing something very different than this. And then I was asked this question. I asked them, and I'll ask you. Anybody else suffering from a similar wound? Anyone? Yes. yes. Then engrave this on your heart. Ooh. <laughs> I pushed it in and it just slid right in. My heart opened up and made space for it. Then I was asked to pick up the next. You got another one? I had a whole pile of them. 1989. Spent 15 years building a multi-million dollar estate. The real estate market collapses in Southern California and all of it goes through our fingers like water. We could not stop it. Could not stop it. We have a million dollars in debt. I'm the corporate signer. When the bank can't get it from the company, who do they come to? To me. We spent the next 10 years paying that back. My sweetest heart is with us today. I wish I had time to tell you some of the things she did were miraculous to help make that possible. 16 hour days, seven kids through college, four of them married during that time. Last check paid off in August of 2000. Dark nights, two years into it, I almost cashed in a million dollar life insurance policy to solve that problem. Anybody else suffering from a similar wound? Anybody had a financial setback? Yeah. Almost everybody in that room raised their hands. Engrave this on your heart. 
about three rows back, right over here, there was this really beautiful woman, probably in her early 30s, and she had tears just streaming down her cheeks, holding this. And I asked her name. She gave it to me. I said, may I share with you what I was told in the dream? And she said, yes. So I did. Your character has been forged in the furnace of adversity. You know what pain feels like. She nodded her head, yes. <laughs> can you take it back? No. But you can choose to use this rich experience as a resource to better understand what somebody else is going through. And if you'll do this, there'll finally be purpose in this suffering, joy in the journey, and much-needed healing in our soul. I was told to turn around and face this person. So I did. <clears throat> Guess what he was dragging? Because I turned to her and she went just like this. I said, yep. He was dragging his sack. Except for I knew what was in it. Just knew. Intuition, empathy were alive. I woke up. You see, when we take our life experiences, we put them in our heart, and we use them to serve another one, another person, we finally do have purpose. We have joy because as we listen, we look for the good in that person. And we notice it. We notice what's important to them. We begin to listen differently. We're not listening to respond. We're listening to truly understand where they are. Truly understand. Then we begin to ask empathetic questions because our self-sabotaging dialogue is no longer there. It's here as a resource. We're listening. We hear things nobody else hears. We see things nobody else sees. And we can ask questions nobody else can ask, and they are the difference maker. And you watch that person go, Finally, somebody understands me. I ask them, and I'm going to ask you. I've asked this all over the world. When was the last time someone cared enough about you to listen until you felt totally understood? They didn't try to fix you. Last week? Last month? Last year? I asked that question to 3,000 empathetic health coaches and seven hands went up. 1,800 realtors in, Ber in Bermuda, six hands went up. This is so rare. Og called it the greatest secret of success in all ventures. Let us have the courage to know that the greatest gift we give someone is for them to feel understood. Let us understand that our greatest asset is our life experience. And if we've got courage to take it, put it in our heart and use it in service, oh, the difference we could make in this world. So let me close with this question. In what way have you been uniquely prepared to serve. I still hear from people in Prague. You are nature's greatest miracle. Have the courage to repurpose your experience for the service of others. And have we not, in fact, watched that today? We have. Thank you.